Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be comparing dedicated routers for use with Guy Godin's amazing virtual desktop app. So here we have a BT Smart Hub 2 which was free. Here we have a TP-Link Archer AX10 Wi-Fi 6 router which costs £60 in the UK. And here we have the ASUS Republic of Gamers Rapture AXE 11000 which cost a whopping £480. But which is best for virtual desktop? Let's dive straight in then and remember we're born to respawn. In the UK, a router is for cutting wood and a router is used for the internet. Just clearing that up. Virtual Desktop is the amazing app that allows you to play your Steam and Oculus PC library wirelessly on your Quest or Quest 2. The best setup for Virtual Desktop is to use a dedicated router on the 5 GHz channel. This is so that no other devices in your household can interfere with the Wi-Fi and thus give you the best possible performance. Quick tip here, Virtual Desktop does not care about the speed of your internet connection it is only concerned about the strength of your Wi-Fi. So a dedicated router equals flawless performance. So which router is best? I've gathered together three very disparate devices here. The first is a BT Smart Hub 2 from my internet service provider, which was free. It is a Wi-Fi 5, or more specifically an 802.11ac dual band router and is about three years old. The second is a TP-Link Archer AX10 Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax dual band router, which cost me £60 in the UK. Lastly, we have the completely outrageous and outrageously priced ASUS Republic of Gamers Rapture AXE 11000 Wi-Fi 6E or 802.11ax router. Yes, I know the Quest 2 doesn't support Wi-Fi 6E, but the router does support Wi-Fi 6. And I just wanted to see how the best router money can buy would perform with virtual desktop. For the comparison, I have played five of my favorite games with a mix of single player, open world, PVE and PVP to really push Virtual Desktop and our three routers to the max. So I'll be playing Beat Saber on the new original soundtrack 5 pack, then Population 1 to test latency in a competitive environment, then Zenith for the open world MMORPG experience, after the fall for the co-op PVE. And finally, the beast that is Gunman Contracts using the Half-Life Alex engine to run our favourite John Wick in VR experience, which I have done a video on here. The comparison will be side by side and as close to the same gameplay as I can possibly get. It's easy to do with Beat Saber, but a little more challenging with other titles, so bear with me. My virtual desktop settings are as follows. On the PC Stream app, we have automatically adjust bitrate ticked, as per Guy Godin's advice on my channel. In the streaming tab, we have VR graphics on medium, VR frame rate at 90 frames per second, VR bit rate at 75 megabits per second, sharpening at 75%, synchronous space warp at automatic, sliced encoding on, and the performance overlay tab ticked. For information, synchronous space warp is a technique to smooth frame rates in VR. If the headset detects a frame rate drop, it will extrapolate an intermediate frame based on the previous and next frame to smooth the user experience. This is a very simplistic explanation. If you want more information on this technique, Google it. First up is Beat Saber Firestarter on the new original soundtrack 5. As you can see, the game is sitting at a rock steady 90 frames per second at 28 milliseconds on the BT Smart Hub and AXE 11000 router, with the Archer AX10 actually fluctuating between 27 and 28 milliseconds and no synchronous space warp active. Next up we have Population 1, the ultra competitive online battle royale game. All routers are sitting at a pretty much rock solid 86 to 90 frames per second and 27 to 29 milliseconds latency and no synchronous space warp active. Yeah, hey, come on. Come on. There's another dude after me. Fuck. Thanks. Which is it? Alright, let's get in the race. Oh, I like it also. We move on to Zenith, The Last City, an MMORPG in VR, and we can see again a steady 87 to 90 frames per second with 27 to 28 milliseconds latency and no synchronous space warp active.
Next up is the PvE masterpiece that is Vertigo Games After the Fall. Again, we see a pretty steady 85 to 95 frames per second at 29 to 31 milliseconds latency from the BT Smart Hub and the Archer AX10, but for some reason the hugely expensive Asus ROG Rapture seems to struggle with After the Fall and hits latency as high as 51 milliseconds at some point, plus it also triggers synchronous space warp twice in the footage shown. Last of all, we have the hugely demanding gunman contracts for Half-Life Alex. This mod pushes even a Valve Index to its max, so I wanted to see how Virtual Desktop could handle it and, well, pretty good actually, with all routers managing between 38 to 51 milliseconds latency across the board depending on the action, with synchronous space warp active throughout my playthrough. Before I get to my conclusion, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons. I love you all truly madly and deeply. Plus, if you enjoy the madness that is Mac in VR, please smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload any new content. You can also support the channel by purchasing some of my stylish t-shirts. Check out my merch shelf down below. So, which router do I recommend? Well, forget about the Asus ROG Rapture AXE 11000 straight away. A completely bloated and overpriced piece of kit that underperformed and was a massive disappointment. Why pay nearly £500 for a router that is outperformed by a free ISP router that is over three years old? That is the most disappointed I've ever been with a bit of gaming kit. It's huge and it looks like it should be amazing, but it's a bit of a limp dick. Moving on. The TP-Link Archer AX10 performed flawlessly throughout, had the most consistent FPS along with a one millisecond advantage most of the time over the other two routers. It's easy to use by the TP-Link Tether app, performs effortlessly and only costs £60. But, and there's always a but, the BT Smart Hub 2 is free. Didn't require any setup, I just plugged it in and it worked. The performance was good, matching and exceeding the hugely expensive Asus ROG Rapture AXE 11000 in every test and was just a solid performer throughout. So who wins? Well, you do. My test proves that you do not need to fork out a huge amount of money to optimise your virtual desktop experience. All you need is a dedicated 802.11ac or AX router with a 1 gigabit LAN port for virtual desktop and you will be optimising your performance. These routers can be bought for as little as £30 in the UK and you have an old ISP router lying about as long as it's dual band, you can slave it as a second dedicated router. So we all win. One of my subs actually summed this up quite succinctly when he posted this. The answer is no difference. Which is the most surprising thing I found out while making this video. But what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my conclusion? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah, this is what I'm done!